Good morning, my name is Ralph Friedrichs and welcome to Take Your Life Back. Today we're going to talk about the facts of marijuana. Uh, in the previous video we spoke about uh, the facts about alcohol poisoning, so today we're going to touch on marijuana. Just to update you folks, I did go down to my old stomping ground in Mastic Beach and I uh, did a few interviews that you probably have heard by now before you even saw this because it's on this particular segment. Uh, the interviews were quite interesting and I do apologize that there is some profanity from uh, one of the interviewer, interviewees. Uh, however, my job is to bring the real people with real stories to you and that's what I do. And uh, unfortunately, I can't control what people say. Uh, it is certainly not condoned by me whatsoever. However, those are real people with real issues with real stories. As usual. I just want to promote uh, Dr. Luis Gonzalez over at startingpoint.com. Uh, it's actually startingpointmn.com. That's S T A R T I N G P O I N T M N.com. He has two entities. He has the first entity, like myself, to take you from recovery to, uh, excuse me, from your addiction to your recovery. He will walk with you step by step, 24 hours at a time. He will also, like myself, not talk about your past. You can utilize him for uh, addiction coach recovery methods, and uh, he uh, will, like I said, walk with you step by step. The other part of it is if you have compassion, uh, excuse me, if you have passion, professionalism, and personality, and some addiction background, whether it being your own or uh, helping other people, you can also go to him and uh, go through his educational program and become a addiction recovery coach. Uh, so that is uh, both his entities over at Dr. Uh, Lou Gonzalez uh, uh, or Dr. Luis Gonzalez at startingpointmn.com. His phone number is 844-414-8444. That's 844-414-8444. Now on my two websites, I have the informational website, which is for addiction and recovery, and that is clearviews.info, C-L-E-A-R-V-I-E-W-S dot I-N-F-O. Clearviews.info is strictly information on addiction and recovery. There are tons and tons of videos. There are articles. There are stories. The stories and articles and some of the videos are by doctors, psychologists, and psychiatrists, and uh, I merely put their stories or their articles or their videos on my website for your informational purposes. My own videos speak about my own daily battles, speak about pe uh, battles that you might be experiencing, speak about just about anything. Uh, there's about 130 videos total. Uh, I do ask that if anyone out there has a particular subject they want me to address via video, please uh, email me at, let me just adjust this a little bit, email me at uh, clearreform at yahoo.com, that's C-L-E-A-R-R-E-F-O-R-M. Dot, uh, at yahoo.com or you can text me at 631-599-0218 or you can call me at 844-405-HELP. Now my other website is for like what Dr. Luis Gonzalez does, I also help you walk from your addiction to your recovery 24 hours at a time. Uh, day by day we walk together, we, we figure out what's the best path for you, for you, for you today and for your future. We will also never talk about your past. Um, I just wanted to uh, let everyone know that it was a successful uh, day at, uh, in Mastic Beach yesterday. Um, the first person that you heard on the videotape was the pastor of the Agape Church over on Neighborhood Road. The second person or people that you heard, uh, that was a cleanup crew um, in Mastic Beach. Uh, they were walking the streets and uh, what they do is they're picking up syringe needles, they're picking up bottles. Uh, shots, things as such, uh, empty ones of that, of course, because uh, the people utilized whatever was in them. Uh, the one fellow, Pete, him and I go back many, many years. Uh, I will be at the uh, 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 village meeting October 14, 2014 at 730, uh, just to bring up uh, my uh, goal uh, of helping people in Mastic Beach, Mastic and Shirley area. Uh, if you want to attend, it's on Neighborhood Road. That is um, the village meeting and that is October 14, 2014 at 7.30. Let's start. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about what is marijuana or facts about marijuana. This is coming directly from the CDC. 
I'm going to, as usual, you know when I'm talking from my heart because it's more passionate than when I read, which is sometimes mispronounced, so bear with me. What is marijuana? Marijuana is a mind-altering substance. You uh, smoke it like a cigarette. All forms of marijuana contain THC, Delta-9, tetrahydrocannabinol, the main active chemical in marijuana. It also contains over 400 other chemicals. Those are chemicals you're inhaling, they're in ingesting uh, every time you pick up one of those joints. And uh, I don't want you to be like Clinton and say it's okay because uh, I did smoke marijuana but I never inhaled. It doesn't make it any different. How? is marijuana used. THC is marijuana, uh, in marijuana is strongly absorbed by fatty tissues and various organs. Generally, traces of THC can be detected by uh, standard urine tests several days after smoking a session. However, in heavy chronic users, traces may be detected for several weeks after they have stopped using marijuana. What are the effects of marijuana? Problems with ma uh, what are the effects of marijuana are problems with memory and learning. It's kind of like the alcohol, uh, more with the memory part with the alcohol. Distorted perception, sight, sounds, time, and touch, almost like your seven senses are being destroyed. Difficulty with thinking and problem solving. I mean, anytime you're intoxicated, whether it be marijuana, alcohol, or any other drugs, including synthetic drugs, uh, they will... Uh, compromise your everyday function. Let me turn this down a little. Loss of motor coordination. God forbid, whether it's drugs or alcohol, you get behind a wheel. Uh, uh, but what they're talking about is not a motor vehicle as much as your motor functions like this. These are motor functions. So uh, you will lose that. So go ahead, keep smoking marijuana if you want to lose that too. Increased heart rate, anxiety. Folks, do you want your heart to race to a rapid pace where you might end up with a heart attack uh, because you want to get that high. Poor judgment and decision making. Users can forget to have safe sex, population will increase, and possibly expose themselves to sexually transmitted diseases. Uh, uh, AIDS, for instance, HIV. Folks, when you are smoking, drinking, using any type of substance, uh, your better judgment is forfeited and compromised and therefore that leaves the door open to just about anything. Findings have found that long-term use of marijuana may play a role in some types of cancer and problems with respiratory, immune, and reproductive systems. Folks, I did a, uh, a video on alcohol and the fetal syndrome and my cover picture was uh, a woman uh, drinking a bottle of beer. Shame on the woman uh, doing that, and shame on any parent to, to be utilizing uh, alcohol and uh, knowing that they are pregnant. And the same goes with drugs. There is no difference. Uh, and the same goes with uh, smoking, for that matter. Does smoking marijuana cause cancer? Marijuana contains at least the same amount of carcinogens as tobacco smoke. I hope I pronounced that right, and I hope uh, everybody gets it, but let me spell it out. C-A-R-C-I-N-O-G-E-N-S. What are the physical effects of smoke and marijuana? Now, this is going to be interesting. Marijuana smokers often develop chest problems, including coughing, just like cigarettes, and wheezing, just like cigarettes. They also tend to have more chest colds and than non-users. Furthermore, they are an increased risk of lung, lung infections like uh, pneumonia. Animal studies have found that THC can damage the cells and tissues in the body which help protect the people from disease. And I don't like the fact uh, that animals are being tested uh, like guinea pigs uh, for, to help us. I mean, I know, folks, I get it. Something has to be done to, to help the humans, but uh, I am so against animal testing. I'm against wearing fur, but uh, you know, we all have our own uh, opinions about that. Are people who smoke marijuana more likely to use other drugs? I would say, before I even read this, probably yes, because they're judgments. Marijuana users are an increased risk of using other drugs since they are exposed to and urged to try more drugs. While not all young people who use marijuana go on to use other drugs, further research is needed to predict who will be the greatest risk. How can you tell if someone has been smoking marijuana? He or me might 
he or she might seem dizzy and have difficulty walking, seem silly and giggly for no reason whatsoever, have bloodshot uh, or red eyes, and have difficult time remembering things just when they just happen. Folks, it's like the alcohol. I mean, any drug will make you like this. How does marijuana uh, affect driving a car? Well, I can tell you before I even read this, it's not going to be good. Marijuana has a serious harmful effects on the ability to drive safely, including alt alertness, the ability to concentrate coordination, and the ability to react quickly. Is smoking marijuana addictive? Marijuana can be addicting. In 2002, 15% of people entering drug abuse treatment programs reported that marijuana was their primary drug of abuse, showing that they need to stop using the drug. For more information on marijuana and other drugs, visit National Institute on Drug Abuse at www.nida.nih.gov. Join together, advancing effective alcohol and drug policy prevention and treatment. Go to www.jointogether.org. Folks, this wasn't a lot of information, but it's enough to make you realize that marijuana is not good for you. But we're going to recap now, and then we're going to recap at the end of this segment. What is marijuana? Marijuana is a mind-altering substance. All forms of marijuana contain THC. The main active chemical in marijuana is called tetrahydrocannabal. It also contains over 400 other chemicals, folks. Can you imagine what cocaine probably has and crack? How is marijuana used? THC as marijuana is strongly absorbed by fatty tissues and various organs. Generally, traces of THC can be detected by standard urine tests several days after smoking session. However, in heavy chronic users, traces may be detected for several weeks after they have stopped using marijuana. What are the effects of marijuana? Problems with the memory and learning. Distorted perception, sight, sounds, time, touch. Difficulty with thinking and problem solving. Loss of motor coordination. Increased heart rate, anxiety. Poor judgment decision making. Users can forget to have safe sex and possibly expose themselves to sexually transmitted diseases. Finding. Findings have found that long-term use of marijuana may play a role in some types of cancer and problems with respiratory, immune, and reproductive systems. So don't think you're just going to get your little high and it's done with. You're hurting yourself, folks. Does marijuana cause cancer? Marijuana contains at least the same amount of carcinogens as tobacco smoke. What are the physical effects of smoking marijuana? Marijuana smokers often develop chest problems including coughing and wheezing. They also tend to have more chest colds and not than non-users. Furthermore, they are an increased risk of lung infections like an pneumonia. This is the part I don't like to read, but it is my job to bring the news to you. Animal studies have found that THC can damage the cells and tissues in the body, which help protect people from the disease. Are people who smoke marijuana more likely to use other drugs? Marijuana users are an increased risk of using other drugs drugs since they are exposed to and urged to try some other drugs. While not all young people who use marijuana go on to use other drugs, further research is needed to predict who will be at the greatest risk. How can you tell if someone has been smoking marijuana? He or she might seem dizzy and difficulty walking, seem silly and giggly for no reason whatsoever, have bloodshot, uh, bloodshot or red eyes, just like drinking, and have a difficult time remembering things that just happened maybe a couple minutes ago. How does marijuana affect driving? Marijuana has serious harmful effects on the ability to drive safely, including alertness, the ability to concentrate, coordination, and the ability to react quickly. Is smoking marijuana addictive? Marijuana can be addicting. In 2012, 15% of people entering drug abuse treatment programs reported that marijuana was the primary drug abuse, showing that they needed to stop using the drug immediately. And if you want to get more help on marijuana and other drugs, go to www.nida.nih.gov. And if you want to come together, join together, go to www.jointogether.org. Folks, we did the alcohol poisoning. We talked about marijuana. 
One of my segments to come is going to be, uh, we've already discussed synthetic drugs. We're going to talk about cocaine on one segment. We're going to talk about crack on another one. But those are segments to come. I want to just recap on yesterday. My first interview were, or interview we, was uh, Dr. Uh, 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 not, excuse me, Pastor from a church on Neighborhood Road in Mastic Beach. And um, what he had said, because I asked him, what do we need to do to clean these streets up? Because there is a lot of marijuana use, a lot of drug use, a lot of alcohol use. Folks, I was one of those alcohol users on Neighborhood Road. So I know what's out there. And why do you think that I go back to my stopping grounds? Because I know where to look for people. Where do, where do people, and I'll tell you, there was a, an, an older lady, her name is Pat, and she uh, is friends with my mother, and she knows where all the people are doing their alcohol and drugs. She knows exactly where they are. But I will tell you, I do too. Not that I ever touched the drugs, but the alcohol. I used to walk from my house to the liquor shop, back to my house, and drink 10 to 15 shots of vodka. Why? Did I do it during my walk? Because I thought I had the whole world fooled. They would never see me drink in front of them. So they thought, I would think, that they would that they were thinking he doesn't drink. Folks, if you're doing marijuana, if you're doing cocaine crack, or if you're only doing alcohol, people do know. People notice the difference in you. The color of your skin, the way you're talking, the silliness that you might be experiencing. The way you carry yourself, people do notice. But So the pastor said, if we had people like me just coming out here and witnessing and t talking to people, telling people that there is hope and there is a life other than addiction, if more people like myself would be out there, maybe a difference could be made. Last week, not yesterday, a week ago yesterday, I had a lady said if there was just another person or a person that would come out here, hand out a phone number for people that are in need just to make a phone call and say, pretty much like my, my business card says, help or my phone number. There are people that just need to, to talk to someone. And who can they talk or turn to? They can't turn to the governmental programs because... A, you call social service, usually it's an uh, automated uh, system. You don't get to talk to a live person. The 24 hotline uh, numbers, a lot of times they're, you're put on hold and not, God knows 911, if you call them, you might be on hold for a little bit. But why can not just me, but other people just walk up and down your neighborhood road in your community and let your lessons empower addiction recovery like my lessons empower addiction recovery because that's what clear reform and clear view stands for community lessons empower addiction recovery why can't you do the same in your community on your own neighborhood road whether it's called that or not it happens to be that our neighborhood road is called neighborhood road so the pastor uh, pretty much uh, said it all uh, and, and wrapped it up in, in a nice little package and that is is that we need more people to go out there and Pete on the other hand who is out there cleaning the mess that these folks are creating I and you probably heard this I said to him wouldn't it be great if I can nip it in the butt in the beginning so you don't have to deal with it at the end meaning if I could just reach two people with this video two people I know I'm reaching me for my recovery if I could just reach one of you guys out there, that is one more that might not dump your empty beer bottles, your empty shots, your syringe needles, needles in your own neighborhood, on your own neighborhood road. In a perfect world, I would love to help thousands that are watching me. But it's not realistic. But if I can just swoop up two people, one being me, which I guarantee you will happen each and every video, each and every minute, each and every day, but if I could just swoop up one of you guys to just realize that there is life after drinking and drugging for a lot of years. There is. Why not start writing a new chapter in your book of life? And what is your book of life? Well, your book of life started like my book of life. In my case, it was 1961 when I was born. And in my end of the book of life will be upon my death when the good Lord Decides that's my time to go. When it's your time to go, you'll have an ending in your book. 
And in your book, just like in my book, it is our parents that from the start of our book, which is our birth, all the way until we're about 17, 18, have to help write those chapters. Those chapters should include things like love, compassion, respect. Those chapters should not include your parents, that you're writing in your chapters that your parents were drinking, smoking, using profanity, or hitting each other. Those should not. But why not start today writing your own chapters in your book? From 0 to 17 and 18, your parents were part of your book. At 18 or so, it is your responsibility to start writing your own chapters in your book of life. Why not start it today? It doesn't matter how old you are. Let's say, hypothetically, you're like me, 52, and you're just starting today. Those 52 chapters that were written that might be less than desirable because of addiction or whatever problems you have because God will forgive you, but whatever problems, those chapters will be pushed away. Today, September 30th, 2014, will be a new chapter in your book of life. Get a new pen out with a different color ink. Put on today's date, September 30th, 2014. And let today be the first chapter for the rest of your life to be good chapters until the end of your time. Why not start today? Do you really need to drink all day to pass out, not to remember anything? Do you need to smoke marijuana and possibly have one of these things happen to you? Do you need to do crack or cocaine? And if you do answer yes, why? What is the reason why you have to do that? Is it because you are afraid of the unknown like I was when I hit rock bottom June 22nd, 2013? Because if it is so, I understand. I've been there. I've done it. I get it. But the unknown is so excellent to tackle once you can get past the first 48 hours of sobriety. Yes, the first day, two, even possibly a week for some of you guys might be the worst in your lifetime. And yes, you're going to probably want to give up, but you have to be strong here. And you have to reach out to your higher power. You cannot fight addiction without God. You can have God without addiction. That's no problem. Because God's the most powerful thing in the world. But you cannot have addiction or fight addiction without God. So if you're ready, September 30th, 2014, today, why not start today rewriting your chapters in your book of life? Your chapters might have included lots of drug and alcohol, might have even included uh, domestic abuse, might have included, included some criminal activities. Folks, it's never ever too late to change as long as you never ever give up on yourself you might have given up on other people in your life I know I have and those same people that I might have given up I've learned to forgive throughout my recovery and addiction as you sober up and time goes on you will learn that a lot of the things that you might have thought and hated another person for, or thought that it was their fault, that you might have even helped create some of those issues. The reason you don't remember is because you were too intoxicated. Sure, there are people that, that uh, you might have ill feelings because you feel that no matter what you've done to be good to them, they've done nothing but to hurt you. Learn to forgive them and move on. And I don't want you to forgive them for them, Forgive them for you, because as soon as you release that out of your system, you can move on to a new chapter in your book, a better chapter in your book. And then when you breathe in and you breathe out, remember that the good Lord has given you that opportunity to breathe in and breathe out. Because somewhere in this world, somewhere, there's at least a couple of people that have taken their last breath forever. Learn to forgive, not for the people that you're learning to forgive, but for yourself to release that. Start today, September 30th, 2014. Rewrite your own chapters in your own book. How do we do that? Well, there's two factors in this equation. Factor number one is the fact that you, yes you, 
need to finally admit you have a problem and stop denying it. Fact two is, is that you have to reach out to your higher power, no matter what. If you feel that you have finally hit rock bottom, today is the best day to start doing it. And if you think you've hit rock bottom and you do reach out to your higher power and you are deny that you're not denying it anymore and you do have a relapse in a week, don't worry about it. Dust your knees, pick yourself up, take your self-inventory and move forward again. Start all over because you just gained some sobriety in your life. Never ever go back into the old alcohol abuse or marijuana abuse. Never ever. Just keep moving forward. I had six or seven relapse before I finally hit rock bottom to a point where there was no more relapse. Because I reached up and God pulled me out because I asked him for guidance and direction and I really, really meant it then. Because I knew I could not direct my own life anymore. So with the power of my own strong will and the power of God and the power of the support of my wife, Casey, I have been sober, I can't even tell you how many days anymore. I think I'm over, I don't know, 500 and something maybe. It doesn't matter how many days for me. What does matter is that I'm sober today for the 24 hours. And then I think tomorrow about the same. I don't think about the past anymore. I don't think about the hurt that I've caused not that I don't want to think about it, it's because I need to start moving forward. If I start worrying about what I've done in the past, that might cause a relapse. I will never forget what I've done, but I can't worry about it anymore. When I reached out to God and I asked for guidance and direction, it was then that God forgave me. And that's the only person or the only uh situation that I need forgiveness from is God. I know in AA there are one of the steps that say to go make amends. And you know what, folks? I believe in that. I get that also. But you have to pick and choose who you make amends with because you might pick and choose the ones that might even cause more grief that might cause you to relapse even further. So if you're ready to do this today, let's look at different methods. We have AA. AA has the 12-step program. Once you become so, uh, once you start tackling your sobriety, you do the 90 uh, meetings in 90 days. You show up in a classroom atmosphere, whether it be in a church, a YMCA, or AA center. Sit in a group, talk, chat. I tried that. I get it. They've been around for a lot of years, and they've helped helped millions of people. But it was not enough for me. I needed to be more actively involved. And that's when I created clearviews.info. That is a website purely to give you information on addiction and recovery. So when I created that, my mission started and is continues continuing as we speak. And that my mission is, is to help you because then you help me. When I talk about the facts of marijuana, I'm thinking about marijuana and what, how bad it is. When I talk about alcohol poisoning, I'll remember how bad alcohol poisoning, how it could have killed me at least three or four times. When I talk about people have accidents because of drugs and alcohol, I'll remember that because I've had two accidents, not because of drugs and alcohol, but one was because uh, in the Marine Corps in 1983, Beirut, Lebanon, the other one was an accident in Alaska. However, these are all little triggers that I will always refresh my memory of why I am sober and why I want to continuously be sober. So try my methods. Text me at 631-599-0218. Ask me about my methods. And let us discuss what is best for you. Is AA good for you? Are my methods good for you? Or maybe we'll even talk about how severe you are. Do you need to go to a treatment center? And if so, how many days do you think you need to go? 30, 60, 90 days. And depending on what you <clears throat> choose with, uh, with the treatment center, we need to discuss, do you have insurance? Are you on Medicaid? If you have no insurance and you have no Medicaid, can we maybe find a, st uh, a state um, uh, function or a state-sponsored rehab center that will take you at pro bono, at no charge? We can do this all together. And this is advice I'm willing to give you for free, but you need to reach out to me. Text me at 631-599-0218, or you can call me at 844-405-HELP. And we'll talk about it. 
So you have at least three methods and you can go and jump around. You can go to the treatment center for 30 days, come out, go to AA and do mine or vice versa and go to the treatment center. But all those have to have two goals. Goal number one is to include your higher power, to include God, to include reaching up and saying, I cannot handle my life alone because you obviously can because you've gone to this point. You've come to the fork in a road between addiction and recovery. Your fork in a road, you need to make a right and go to recovery. So you need your higher power. And number two is you need to want more than anything in the world to seek sobriety because all methods are shooting for the same thing and that is to continuously seek sobriety whether it's alcohol or drugs or whatever those are the things you have to do so you have the methods start and write that the, the new chapters in your book of life September 30th 2014 use a new pen You've learned, hopefully, from your chapters that were less than desirable previously. You might want to go to some people that you've heard when you know that these people are not going to be agitated even more by going to them. So you need to pick and choose on who you speak to. And you want to, more than anything in the world, want to start being a good role model. Whether you're the uh, household... Um, representative or how should I say if you're the role if you're going to be the role model of your house how do you carry yourself are you continuously going to smoke drink my cat must be around smoke drink use profanity and start hitting people in your own home or today because you're now going to start seeking sobriety maybe starting today let's start being a good role model shall we if you need to smoke do it outside the house Obviously, if you're going to seek sobriety, you shouldn't have to worry about the drinking part. But let's say you're not seeking sobriety and you just want this particular segment just about how to be a good role model. These are the four things not to do, ever. You should never smoke in front of your children. You should never drink in front of your children. You should never use the foul mouth in front of your children. And you should never abuse anyone mentally or physically in front of your children or ever at all. So these are the four action plans for four, those four items. If you need to smoke, go do it outside the house. If you need to drink, you do the same. Do it outside the house. If you need to use your profanity, that trash mouth, go where it belongs in a bathroom. Right in a toilet. That's where that profanity belongs. And if for some reason you need to physically abuse a person, you need to seek help via counseling or therapy. And if you're the victim of this physical abuse, you need to call the authorities. Have this loved one taken out in handcuffs is easier and better because the he'll, he or she'll get help on the outside. And they will eventually come home because in handcuffs means still alive. They'll probably come home again eventually, hopefully. But if the authorities are called to have to take you because you were so physically abused, taken out in a body bag, that is irreversible. You're dead. Don't let it get to that point. You have to be a role model. Because your children's book of life that you have now committed to help and write between zero, their birth, and 17 or 18, cannot see those four things in their chapters. Because if they see these four things, and if they go out and do those four things, and they end up on the Jerry Springer and Maury uh, and the Steve Walco shows. And then when they say it was because of my parents that I was, I'm hitting people, I am using profanity, I am an alcoholic or a drug uh, dealer or whatever, they're going to blame it on the parents. Then you know that what I'm telling you right now needs to stop. But it will be too late then. So if you stop those four things now, and you add a few other things into your home as the role model so that your kids see this on a daily basis. those chapters written by them in conjunction with you will be better those things should definitely always include family dinners I know and I get it we are as a society as such in a fast-paced world where economically financial uh, strains are upon us 
where mother and father have to work. However, most people don't work on weekends, so why not have Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday nights, dinner nights, family dinner nights. A family dinner night becomes a forum of communication at the dinner table, and you might pick up on little things that your children are talking about that might alert you of something going wrong, and then you can nip it in the butt now. The things in their chapter should include respect for each other. You should respect your children as much as you want your children to respect you. Those things that should be in the chapters of your kids' books should include love. Show physical love and verbal love. Hug them. Put your arm around them every once in a while and definitely tell them you love them. Those chapters in their book of life written in conjunction with you should include compassion, sympathy. They should not include the drinking, the smoking, the profanity, and the uh, uh, physical abuse. They should include all these other things. That way you are grooming and molding your child that when your child leaves at 17 or 18 and they go to the real world, they have a shield around them. Because if you don't do those and you just do the smoking, drinking, profanity and physical abuse, if you do those four and your child goes on, they're going to blend right into society because that is what society is all about. That is what society is about. So start writing your children's book. Uh, chapters in their book as you're writing your new beginning because the past doesn't matter let's forget about that but if you still have children at home and even if you're a grandparent you only have grandchildren visiting start today rewriting those chapters in your book of life starting today and then this will all continue one day continue to be a sober life continue to be a good role model life for the rest of your life Folks, let's touch base on this marijuana issue. Marijuana is a mind-altering substance, folks. So you need to stay away from that. The effects of marijuana are uh, problems with memory and learning, distorted perception, sight, sounds, time and touch, difficulty with thinking and problem solving, loss of motor coordination, increased heart rate and anxiety, poor judgment, decision making. You might even forget to use safe sex when you have sex and leave yourself open for HIV and AIDS. The physical effects of smoke and marijuana, uh, chest problems, coughing, wheezing. You have a tendency to possibly get pneumonia more than any other person. People who smoke marijuana are more likely to use other drugs. Marijuana users are, are at an increased risk of using other drugs because you're around people or around other drugs consistently. How can you tell if someone's been smoking marijuana? Well, they're going to be dizzy, they're going to be walking funny, their eyes are going to be bloodshot, and they might even slur their world, uh, words, and they will constantly laugh about things that aren't even funny, and they will forget things that were just talked about a few minutes ago, like the Book of Life. If you're smoking marijuana, you probably don't remember that we just spoke about the chapters in our Book of Life. And I would hope to God that whoever's watching me is at least giving me the courtesy while I'm here trying to help you to put your alcohol away and take your drugs and put them away. How does marijuana affect your driving? Well, it will affect and it will become a lethal weapon. It might kill you, but more importantly, it might kill an innocent person because you're taking other people's life because of your irresponsibility of drinking and drugging. Is smoke, is smoke and marijuana addictive? Yes, it is. Marijuana can be addictive. In 2002, 15% of people entering drug abuse treatment programs reported that marijuana was the primary drug of abuse, showing they need help to stop using the drug. Folks, for more information on marijuana and other drugs, go to www.nida.nih.gov and join together at jointogether.org. I'm going to make this a shorter one than usual today, but I just want to tell you that um, we need to rewrite the chapters in our book of life. We need to be a good role model, and tomorrow we're going to have a really good segment coming up, and I look forward to it. I don't want to reveal the subject yet, but I want you to know if you take these, uh, let the sunshine into your heart and into your home, you will get nothing but positive results. Eliminate the negative people around your home, around your heart, and you'll have nothing but positive results. 
And remember, a sober today will guarantee you a better tomorrow. That I promise you. And if you believe what I'm telling you in here, it will become clear no matter where you are. Clear community, lessons, and power, addiction, recovery. We all as a community have so many lessons that need to empower our addiction recovery. It needs to empower your addiction recovery. Together, we all can have an influence on drugs and alcohol abuse, but we need to work as a community. I hope everybody has a great day today, September 30th, 2014, and I hope we all start writing new chapters in our book of life, and let's make every day a day to show our family that we are a good family, a responsible family, and that you are a good role model. If anything else, please have a sober day, and God bless you.